Today we're diving into something a little bit unexpected. I've been asked to review the Dehancer Pro plugin for DaVinci Resolve, a tool designed to give your digital footage that classic film look. Now I'll be honest, I've always been a little bit skeptical about plugins. I own a few, but I don't use them often. First, because I mainly work in the corporate film space where I never felt like those tools had much of a place. And second, because many plugins end up looking artificial and make the footage feel overworked. However, I love learning new things and I'm always open to exploring a product that could truly enhance my work. So let's jump right in and see if the Hanser Pro lives up to the hype. So what exactly is the Hanser Pro? In simple terms, it's a plugin designed to mimic the characteristics of actual film stocks. The idea is a tool that responds to adjustments you make to the footage based on specific film stocks and development techniques you select. I'm old, but I've actually never shot on film, except as a little kid with my little point and shoot still camera. I've also never developed films, but I remember my dad had a dark room where he would develop his films. And in that process, he could really change the outcome of the image by exposing the negatives to different conditions in order to get the results that he wanted. Well, Dehancer Pro works the exact same way. Not only can you select the film stock you want to use, but you can adjust the different settings in the development process that will respond differently based on the film stock and also based on print paper that you can select. Corporate films come with the stigma of being pretty flat and not too extreme or exciting. My clients want good looking, high quality video, but Hollywood is not really the target, so I wasn't sure how valuable this tool would be for the majority of my work. The reality is it didn't take long for me to feel like this tool could bring something new and elevate corporate films to the next level. I think it's because not only is this a powerful tool, I never felt like the results were overdone. Using Dehancer Pro allowed me to add very small, subtle changes to the image that made my project look more polished. Dehanso Pro does provide documentation on best practices for building your nodes tree. I typically have a very simple nodes tree consisting of a noise reduction node, a color transformation node to get from log footage to Rec. 709, color correction nodes to adjust my exposure, color temperature, and contrast level, and a couple of grading nodes to give my project a slightly unique look. Why well, I basically can keep the same approach, starting as I normally do with a noise reduction node. Next, I normally have a color space transform node. Well, Dehancer Pro includes a built-in color space transform tool. This means you don't need to add any extra nodes. It's all handled within the plugin. So we'll just add Dehancer Pro to this node. Now, one thing I do find a little annoying when you first apply Dehancer Pro to your footage, all the tabs are checked to be enabled and most of them have a value of zero or neutral, but not all of them, like the actual film stock option or the film grain option. So at first, the results are very extreme, at least for my liking. I haven't found a way to adjust the default values to start with the blank canvas. So the first thing I do is turn off grain and any other items that are drastically changing my image. It seems a little weird that the plugin starts applying certain things before we get even started. Now that we have a blank canvas, let's go back to the top in the input section where we can do the color space transform. If your timeline settings uses YRGB Rec. 709, you can use the choose camera option, which I absolutely love. You can select your camera by make and model. So in my case, I shot this on the Sony FX6 and the base ISO that you used. So S-Log Cine at 800. And then the plugin will automatically apply the color space transformation to Rec. 709. I wanted to test and see if there was a difference in color between using Dehancer Pro or using the DaVinci color space transform tool. Without changing anything else, is there a difference between using one versus the other? So I created a new node and applied the color space transform tool and change the setting to be S-Log3 Cine to Rec. 709. So now we can compare the two versions, and you can see that there's a slight difference between the two. Dehancer Pro appears to have a more contrasty result. It's not much, but enough to notice, and you can see it on the waveform as well. 
The signal is a little bit more compressed. The highlights are clipped just above 90 IRE using the Enhancer Pro versus just below 100 IRE using Color Space Transform. It also resulted in a less saturated image when using the Enhancer Pro. I like the result from the Enhancer Pro, but if you'd rather stick with Color Space Transform, simply place that node before using the Enhancer Pro and set the input to match the output of your Color Space Transform, so in my case, Rec. 709. There are a few adjustments that we can make in the input tab, but these are kind of like system-wide settings, and they do not inherit the characteristics of any film stock that we will be selecting later. Those adjustments tend to be very drastic and not as natural and soft as what we can do later on, so I try not to use them. I guess those could be used if you needed to correct a real issue on that particular clip before working on the grade. The Answer Pro is structured to work in a logical way from top to bottom, where you can keep adding layers to your specific selection of film stock, development settings, etc. You actually don't need any knowledge of films, you can easily find your way through the process starting from the top and moving your way down all the options. Now our next tab is the film stock, the heart of the plugin. There's a wide selection of stocks available for you to pick from, so it can be a little bit overwhelming. Talking with other users of this plugin, some actually research certain films and what stock was used in order to try to achieve that same particular look on their project. Now I'm not convinced that with my level of equipment and experience, I could ever get close to making my footage look like Dune or Mad Max by just selecting the same stock. But I think the concept of picking a stock that then responds uniquely to adjustment made later makes sense and really gives you infinite options as far as the end look that you can create. For me, I'll go through the different stock until I find one that gives me a great base for the look I want to create. You'll also notice the first adjustment that we can make here with this push and pull slider, and it will adjust the look of that particular stock. Everything further down will now be affected by the base stock that we just picked. Next step is the film developer. You can start adjusting any of those settings, and again, they look so much softer and really take on the stock characteristics. They don't feel like an effect added on top of the footage. Even the color boost feels softer than the DaVinci color boost. Film compression compresses those highlights and or colors to create a softer or harsher look. I would suggest looking at your scope when adjusting any of those settings so you can see what the plugin is doing to the footage. Compressing some of those colors and white points can be very pleasing to the eye. In the Expand tab, you can adjust the black or white point to reach the levels you want. Now I love the Print tab, but I feel like it should be checked sooner. I understand that we just went through the developing of the stock, so logically, printing the negative would come now, but this can have a drastic effect on the image, so I tend to check the print option on before I actually adjust anything. There are a few profile options to pick from, but only the Kodak 2383 and the Fujifilm 3513 allow you to play with the target white option. And it's like a white balance correction tool, but a lot more subtle. If you look at the scope when adjusting the white target, you're only changing the blue and a little bit of the green level. That means you can have a warmer scene without everything looking red because the Dehancer Pro doesn't add red, it removes the blue. As a result, the skin tone stays natural, which is very different from adjusting the white balance in DaVinci. The color head allows you to adjust the color balance of your highlights, midtones, and shadows. The film grain is something I normally dread. I mean, we spend so much time and effort on set making sure we capture the best images without grain, and the idea of adding some grain in post-production has never been something I fully understood. Now you can select from different presets based on film size and ISO settings. So just like in film, the lower the ISO, the less grain you'll have, and you can adjust the amount using the slider. But this tool has an option that I've never seen before. When you go into the custom settings, towards the bottom, there's a film type options. You can select from negative or positive. If you have negative selected, it will look like those cheap filters that just added a layer of grain on top of your image. 
But when you select positive, the grain now looks and feel like it's part of the image. You can adjust not only the size of the grain and the amount, but also the amount in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights, which is great because now you can have different level of grain, which I believe is a lot more realistic. Of course, we will see more grain in the shadows, so I can make that slightly higher than the others. For me, I find that I just want a very small amount to the point where it's not really noticeable. A good friend of mine always says, it should be felt, not seen. And in this case, he is actually right. Film elation allows you to add an amount of red slash orange bleed around the darker part of the image. There's a mask option so you can turn it on and off and see how the effect is being added. Again, I find it to be a great effect when added very slightly to the shot. Next, we have bloom, something that again can add some nice soft touches to certain images. The next three tabs are related to the film stock physically moving either inside the camera or inside of a projector. The one that really took me by surprise is the gate weave effect. It's designed to mimic the very slight movement the film can have inside the camera gate. In film cameras, the film stock runs through the gate to align itself with the shutter before being exposed. Like with any mechanical component, there is a certain level of play between the film stock and the gate. It's not shaky or overly noticeable, but it adds a slight movement to the image that makes everything feel more alive. I'm a person known for not shooting anything handheld. I don't particularly like handheld movement, especially in corporate films. So all my footage are either on tripod, gimbal, or a track. And adding a small amount of gate weave works great with my steady shots. Overscan is something I probably will not use, but you can add different level of overscan to actually show the side of the film stock. The Hanser Pro also has a vignette tool, and once again, the mask option is just a very convenient way of seeing the effect to make sure it does what you want. I wish they had made the position value a slider though, because I just had to keep guessing versus simply sliding the value to the desired position. The monitor sections allow you to use false color or a clipping indicator to see how your adjustments have impacted the exposure of the shot. The output section gives you the ability to then reduce the overall impact of the look you created. Dehancer Pro makes it possible to also export a LUT to use with other editing software, but be aware that a lot of the effects we just created will not translate in a LUT. Now here's the big question, is Dehancer Pro worth it? Well, honestly, I was first surprised how much I enjoy using it, but also how much value it added to my shots. Now, there's no reason corporate films have to be flat and uninspiring. With The Answer Pro, you can give your project a cinematic feel that engages your audience in a new way. It's a tool I can see myself using on every project moving forward. The Answer has a mobile app that brings those powerful film look tools right to your phone. With this app, you can create stunning professional grade looks for your mobile content and stand out from other creators. The app is incredible user-friendly. Just click the edit tab and you'll find all the same setting we've just covered, making it easy to elevate your mobile videos to the next level. Check the description for a link to download Dehancer Pro. Our friends at Dehancer are also giving you 10% off by simply using the promo code CINEMATIC. You can also download my free camera setting cheat sheet. So check out the description and get your free cheat sheet. For more tips and videos to help you elevate your cinematography skills to the professional level, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy filming.